Hey guys, welcome back again and thank you all for your birthday donations. I appreciate that very much and uh, I really took them seriously in terms of drinking all that Jim Beam. Uh, tonight's video uh, is going to be thanks to Noel from Mexico again. Uh, he donated and asked me to make a special video for how to kill the Dutch. How to kill the Dutch uh, with a crazy H4. He actually found one video uh, over the web and uh, he sent it to me and he said, Mayo, have you ever seen it? Of course, I have. Uh, that's exactly the line that I teach my students. And uh, it's really considered to be one of the most critical lines against the Dutch system. And we can uh, freely say we're about to kill the Dutch defense. So how does it happen? After d4, f5, so it's the classic Dutch, you play c4. So you don't go with knight f3 first, going into Leningrad Dutch this way. You just go with c4. Uh, when they go knight f6, you go knight c3. And if they now go with g6, which is considered to be suspicious because of our next move, we just kill them with h4. So you're just about to see one of the most crushing systems against the Dutch Leningrad system from this order of moves. And I'm pretty sure you're going to like it so much and find it nice. Uh, it's very attractive, full of sacrifices. And the idea is, of course, h5. Uh, in order to uh, prove that, I'm going to show you a game played by Nakamura in this system. But I'm also going to show you a game played by my student, uh, ex-Serbian youth champion, Rajkovic, uh, nowadays in IM. So let's get started. You play h4, uh, aiming for h5 and opening uh, the h-file. Uh, it's pretty crushing approach and they have to play d6. It's literally the only move unless they want to get killed. So when you play h4, they have to go with d6. But if they don't go d6, but if they play what majority of players do, who are unfamiliar with this h4 line, they just go with bishop g7. Then you sack the pawn, h5. And here uh, we're going to check what happens when they capture by knight. And for that, we're going to check two games. Nakamura uh, was white in one of them. And uh, they can also take by pawn. Who takes by pawn? You play bishop g5. And then you just want to travel with your knight. You play e3, you play knight g on e2, knight f4, or knight h3, knight f4. Basically, a crucial square uh, for reaching with your knight should be f4. So knight h3, knight f4, knight e2, knight f4. But before that, it was very important to play bishop g5. Uh, that's what happens if they capture by pawn. Usually, everybody captures by knight. And now I'm going to show you another game by one of the top world GMs. Mamejara was white. In practice, I also used to play some h6. Uh, but here, it's even easier if you take on g6, play like Mamejarov, and uh, opt for the following plan. So you just go with knight h3, uh, because this knight eventually goes on f4. So when they play like queen e7, you play bishop g5, uh, g3. Why g3? Because you, first of all, have to find a good place for the light square bishop. And the second thing, apart from finding a good place for the bishop, uh, you also have to go with uh, controlling the center, specifically d5 square. They play kind of stonewall. Uh, you play bishop g2, queen b3, long castles. And he played against a uh, very uh, strong Chinese GM, Lu Shang Lei. But he crushed him very badly in this game. So after like c5, uh, rook h1, bishop f4, jumping with the knight on g5 with a thampion threatening rook, a bishop on h8, uh, played knight g5, and played a very, very crushing move that probably was absolutely forgotten or blundered by black in the game. He does this uh, pawn sack thing. If you take by f-pawn, I guess, 
uh, you have bishop h3, you have knight takes e4, followed by another knight takes on e4, followed by knight takes e6, like a bunch of things. Uh, also, b takes e5 is possible, but basically, black is about to fall apart after this fantastic move. After bishop d4, played queen a4, threatening both bishop on d4 and pawn on c6. Played e5, took on c6, played knight takes d5, and uh, let me just show you the end of the game. Bishop b7, knight c7, knight e6, knight check, and when the guy captured by queen, beautiful uh, mating net with two knights. This was a crushing game by uh, uh, Mamajarov. I really enjoyed it so much, and uh, whenever I teach my students, this is one of the first games I like to teach them. Uh, so, Mamajor really showed you the plan if they ever go with some sort of flexible moves when you play h5. Let's take a look what happens when they take by knight on h5, because it looks very tempting. And also tempting looks uh, to take by rook, but you don't take here by rook. And uh, that is very important to make the difference between taking by rook here and in the main line when they have a d6 already. Uh, when, Just like I told you, playing the d6 after h4 is the only move, but let's talk about it a little bit later. When they play knight h5, you play e4. Obviously, you threaten to take on h5. Let me now show you the game of uh, Nakamura and my student. Uh, in those two games, f takes e4 uh, was played. Rook takes h5, g takes h5, queen takes h5, and bishop h6. What is so special about this move? White threatens queen e5 to use like kind of symmetry and uh, the weak position of the king. Also, there is no possibility for black to defend themselves with the queen e8. Uh, because uh, they're about to get mated. And by the way, they uh, that's why you just have to go with... Uh, I mean, black has to go with bishop h6. Uh, my student had a game against uh, Macedonian uh, woman FM uh, who played e6. Makes sense, because she would like to put that queen on either e7 or f6 to defend herself. After knight takes e4, which stops queen f6, queen e7. Looks like she kind of solidified her position, threatens queen b4. After long castles, an easy rook lifting is about to happen. Queen f7, hoping desperately to remove this queen or just to release some pressure from the king. Bishop g7, rook to d3, and the rest was just history. He came up with checkmate in like a couple of moves. I'm going to briefly show you what happened in the game without commenting the game. Rook f3 check. Queen h4 check. C takes d5. Uh, like, let's clear out the way for an easier attack. D takes e6. Rook c3. Queen a5 threatening queen b5 checkmate. Queen c5. This one. Rook b3. And the mate was... Uh, obvious after this it was just queen to be four so you've just seen what happened in that game and let me just show you what happens in Nakamura's game where after bishop h6 uh, Fide master uh, Baron decided to take on h6 uh, Nakamura captured and this guy played king g8 Nakamura played queen g5 king f7 knight takes e4 and this guy uh, probably when he played this queen g8 maneuver thought like okay this is good uh, I'm still up on exchange I'm not a, he doesn't even have a pawn and uh, uh, knight for the given rook and he's about to put the king into safety but Nakamura wouldn't be one of the best players in the world uh, if he wouldn't be able to conduct the attack in the following fashion so let's take a look at this queen f4 Queen takes e7, threatens, queen takes e8. Plays knight c6, puts the king into safety. Queen g6, threatens knight d6. And the hurricane begins. So after king f7, d5, kicking the knight away. Knight f3, threatening the fork. Threatening uh, this king. 
playing queen d8 we check, rook gives we check, knight f7, and whoever enjoys the tactical part of these lessons, uh, you should be finding a move here for white and a small combination. Rook takes e5, a very nice rook uh, sack, and after this queen h4 checkmate. So just like you see, uh, just because of these games, just because of these options, uh, we just have to consider this line being extremely dangerous. And they can take on e4 uh, and allow us to take on h5. It just leads to uh, very serious consequences for them. So when you play like e4, they gotta put the knight back. And uh, here, for the first time in this lesson, I have to show you my game. I played against <clears throat> sorry, I played against Grandmaster Haraiz uh, from Spain. So e takes f5, g takes f5. And uh, I played like a whole bunch of uh, different options here. I played bishop g5, I played knight f3, I played bishop h6. In this game, I just decided to go with knight f3, like logical uh, developing move. The guy went with d6. He always played like uh, very interesting approaches here with the knight c6 uh, plan with e6, queen e7 and played like this. I just did something like queen c2, continuing to develop myself, e6, long castles, queen e7. And just when he probably thought he uh, was about to either play short castle or bishop d7 long castle, I broke in the center with d5. Of course he couldn't take. He played knight d8 and I believe that the crucial move and the refutation of the system was rook e1. Because he couldn't play e5, because I would have taken and just completely crushed his king and the... Uh, of course, queen is there, you gotta put the knight, I mean, it's like... or bishop and it's terrible. And I was completely winning. Uh, so, it's so nice, uh, I mean, such a nice experience to play against these positions. And you don't have to panic. This is a really, really good game for white. So after e takes, g takes, uh, I'm suggesting you to play this plan with knight f3, bishop f4, queen c2, and long castle. But you can also play like one guy did in one of his games, bishop uh, g5, played queen d2, played uh, long castle, and then push in the center and broke with d5. Um, a very interesting question could be, how should you play if in these positions, when you play h4, instead of uh, going with bishop g7, they just go with kind of flexible h6. h6 just weakens the pawn on g6. And uh, that's a great chance for you to do a typical maneuver with knight h3, knight f4, uh, weakening this g6 pawn and going after the g6 pawn. Uh, there. So when you play knight h3, d6, knight f4, threatening on g6, and you just play d5. Uh, white now has a full control of the light squares and is about to break with e4 or h5 afterwards. After c6, of course, he found a good place for the light square bishop, and the light square uh, bishop fianchetto on g2 is usually our plan. Uh, going with knight a6, knight c5, and controlling the e4, bishop g2, bishop d7, and break in the center turns out to be a crucial thing for a very, very nice initiative for white. Uh, finally, if they play e6, I just told you play h5, knight h5, you just play e4, threatening, rook takes h5. Uh, if they play bishop g7, you sack and then you just go with knight f3, knight b5. Uh, you just stretch this queen and king and the defense all over the board, and you just have to be ready to play a bit of a crazy position, but initiative is definitely on white side, and it's very easy and really enjoyable for playing with a white piece. That's why uh, I told you in the beginning of this lesson that when you play h4, they literally have only one move. They have to play d6. That's the only move. And in the past, uh, all these good GMs who turn out to somehow end up in this opening, uh, they just went for d6. You play h5. And this is a little bit 
counter intuitive in uh, in comparison with the previous line because here the only move is knight h5 and then you sack your rook on h5 but before that what happens if they now play a flexible bishop g7 you can take you can take and play two kinds of uh, lines you can play queen to d3 followed by e4 followed by queen h3 followed by uh, for example, knight f3, bishop g5, and the logical development. But you can also play what Mama Jarev did in his game, knight h3, followed by bishop g5, knight f4, g3, bishop g2, uh, with another logical setup for white. And another thing could be rook g8 flexible approach, where with just one like control of the h file after h takes g6, and where you once again go with more or less typical g3 and after uh, bishop g7 bishop g2 and once again you just have like a bunch of nice and interesting plans cope with knight h3 knight f4 bishop g5 even knight f3 in some positions that depends on your preferences during the game but basically white just looks good in these positions uh, especially considering the fact that the h file is in your control uh, and that's why they have to take by rook. Simply they have to, and you take by rook. Uh, there is one interesting thing about this line, is that after g takes h5, you just go with e4. An interesting fact about this variation is that it's very common to look all kinds of levels. And uh, it's based on some very concrete engine moves. So unlike most of the lectures where I just explain you and give you like very clear uh, like explanations, why do you do something here? That's not going to be the case in all the variations and against all the lines by black. You definitely threaten to take on h5. Probably of all the moves, the worst one is f takes e4. You take on h5 with a tempi and you play queen h3. And if the king goes on e8, you can make a draw with queen h5 if you like. But if you don't like, Grandmaster Drev, uh, one of the best uh, Russian GMs, uh, played bishop e2, going with the bishop g4, and chasing that king away. After like c6, knight e4, king c7, knight f3, bishop g7, and usually a typical way to fight against this pretty safe position of the king on c7 is with c5, bishop f4, and queen goes either on f7 or on h2. It's very important to be familiar with this kind of things, because if you're unfamiliar with these lines, you might have lots of problems uh, to uh, fully justify your compensation and the pretty weak position of the king on c7 usually. Uh, for the rest of the game, check Drev against Bartel played in Dubai 2014. It's not even important, obviously here, why it has a beautiful compensation. I want to show you one game uh, in Blitz played by myself. I played against some FM. The guy went King C6. I played check, check. Uh, he completely forgot that my queen can all of a sudden go into here. I played Knight C5, Queen A3, check. Queen b3 check and queen b5 checkmate. So that was a very funny game where my opponent probably went for, of all the variations, uh, probably the worst one with f takes e4. So once again, queen h5 and then you just play bishop e2. When you play bishop e2, you threaten bishop g4. Most likely they will play c6 followed by king c7. Once again, idea is to go with knight f3, c5, bishop f4, and place your queen either f7 or h2 with a further action. If queen e8, you play bishop g4, e6. Uh, by the way, they can play king d8 because you take queen and then take bishop. Uh, e6, you play queen h3, threatening d5. You play knight e4, and don't tell me that you wouldn't be happy to play a game like this. You threaten knight g5, you threaten bishop g5, you threaten to develop your piece to make long castle. That's why I told you, you just have to be creative. There is a very interesting uh, fact about this line. For example, 
Mateusz Bartel, he's a strong GM from Poland, who played this opening a couple of times. But what actually makes this variation even more interesting that he used this line with the white pieces, uh, which means that he fully believes that this is probably the strongest line against the Leningrad variation playing like this. So uh, here his opponent played h6, he played knight e2, knight c6, played bishop e3, followed by long castles and you just have uh, fantastic compensation, uh, mainly uh, due to the bad position of the king on d8 and uh, for the rest of the game you just has, has, to, uh, has to rely on your tactical skills and your creativity. Um, all things considered, uh, this f takes e4 is pretty suspicious approach. That's why, apart from that, they can go e6. e6 is nothing. This is exactly the game of Bertel played against another good GM, Furman from Ukraine, uh, took on e5, took on e6, played bishop e2. What is important here? Uh, important is that black desperately tries to trade the queens off, well, you desperately try to avoid that and uh, build up some sort of uh, decent compensation. But usually you don't end up with like decent compensation. You just have like more than enough compensation. So after a c6, bishop e3, queen h2, it's a nice because goes on h2 because when the king tries to kind of put himself in sort of a shelter on c7, you'll have c5 and bishop f4 ideas. After knight a6, played knight h3, kick this queen away, and after castles, once again, we have a beautiful game. He played c5, and he broke uh, in the center with d5. White was fantastic in this game, and eventually uh, crushed black in a razor mating attack. Uh, apart from e6, uh, we have another uh, option. Uh, so they can play, uh, for example, queen d7. Uh, this is one of the computer uh, choices. And here, uh, that, that's what I told you in the beginning of this uh, line. And when I told you this is like a crucial position and the crossroad for other options by black, uh, they play queen d7 to do some sort of uh, bon cloud, I believe, opening for black. So now the king wants to end up on d8, while well, the queen wants to go on e8. And here you don't go with check, but you play knight h3. So this is like a computer line. You want to play queen h5, knight g5, then followed by knight f7. And when they play like king d8, you just go with e5. That's another important move in order... Th the previous two moves, actually the last two moves by black, were absolutely engine best and top moves. So here you just learn it like this and you say, aha, Maya uh, taught us this in, in his video and that's what he analyzed. Why? Because in case you take, they have knight g5, threatening knight f7. Uh, and now you threaten to take, now you threaten to jump on f7. If they play queen d4, you just go knight f7, queen h5 with unstoppable mating attack. Uh, after e5, queen e8, you just go with bishop e2, and now you decide to take on h5 with even um, in an even improved version. Queen g6 should be met with knight f4 with a beautiful uh, initiative. And if the, in case they go with h6, you just play knight f4, and they literally can't stop the action with bishop h5, c5, and so on. Uh, in one of the games, was like this, and white had a crushing attack. So just like you see, uh, all these variations really look tempting uh, for uh, white. Uh, lots of guys like to play c6. It's a natural way of opening the shelter and c7 for the king. So check, check, and check. The whole line is forced. You play queen a5, and when they go b6. Uh, here, uh, there was a nice game between Rajabov and Bartel. And I want to show you that game. Uh, but even though Rajabov played uh, queen to a4, uh, I believe that I uh, analyzed and I believe that queen a3 is even a little bit more interesting and better because it supports the c5. But let's just take a look at the game of always 
refreshing and uh, always crushing GM Rajabov, who always has some very interesting and uh, like very, very creative ideas. He was white in this game, played castles. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if c takes d4, he would go with knight b5 and knight takes d4 because he doesn't want to exchange pieces with bishop d4, I'm talking. Queen a3, you see, that's why I think that the queen a3 deserves a little bit more attention because sooner or later they will just kick this queen away. Knight c6, d takes, b takes, play f4 in order to open the king up. Let me just show you the rest of the game. Uh, what I find very important about this game, it was played in the World Cup, which means that... Uh, both of these guys believed in their options and you know what if you play this with black you just take your chances hoping for some crazy game and I don't know to somehow trick your opponent and if you play this with white you simply have to uh, believe in your opening choices and it's very like responsible decision to go in the world cup with a clear exchange sack after five moves and then to uh, try to attack your opponent in the uh, most precise way. So after knight b4, knight f3, a5, knight g5, uh, knight b5 check, winning the bishop pair, uh, bishop d3 was such a strong move and uh, he won this game uh, in a pretty interesting uh, fashion, threatened knight e6, this guy played king d7 and after e takes d6 he resigned. Uh, very difficult game, you can take a look at this game at home but uh, it was very, very uh, nice play by Rajabo, especially like that bishop d3 move, uh, which would be missed by most of the players. After e4, it's time to check the last line. And the last line, and probably the most logical one, is bishop e6. Because after queen h5, they would like to uh, cover themselves with bishop f7. So that's why you play bishop e2. And uh, once again, I'll show you the game of Mamajarov and one more game. In Mamajarov's game, his opponent played king d7, removing on a time from this check. This guy, and Mamajarov, really likes to play this knight h3, knight f4. He, he's really great when it comes to these original positions. Played knight f4, played e5, played e takes f5, put a king into safety, played bishop e3, and you know what? You don't have to be Magnus Carlsen or Mama Jarv himself to uh, realize that here White has more than enough compensation and even much more than that. I believe that White is very close to be completely winning. In the game was knight f6, e5, bishop d4, uh, d takes e6, and after queen g7, took on e5, took on g4, and uh, when the dusk had settled, you can just take a look at what happened in the game. He was like, uh, he played queen d7 and his uh, Fide Master opponent resigned. Uh, pretty crushing game. Uh, once again, uh, you can take a look at this game, uh, you know, like at slower pace uh, with some pauses between the moves and analyzing, but uh, basically, uh, I just made a great game. And in case of bishop g7, which is uh, turn, which turned out to be the best, uh, we're taking, uh, we actually take a look at the game played between Rajabov and Vallejo. Rajabov once again, you know that the guy won the uh, candidates, and uh, we're just talking about like one of the top world players nowadays. After king d7, played d5. Here he missed one very nice tactical trick with bishop g4. Uh, because queen ta uh, ta takes on g4 and in case of this you just win the rook after queen g7 uh, but okay he played e takes f5 bishop g4 threatened f6 played knight g2 and after bishop e3 did absolutely the same like rajabov go with uh, sorry with, like mamajarov played knight f4 jump with the knight on e6 and that's it. Uh, in the game was queen f7, a3, b4, b takes, b takes, took on c7, played queen a5, and after knight c5, uh, another famous grandmaster Vallejo resigned. Uh, what I want to tell you here that you, you've just seen the games of two top Azeri players. I'm talking about ex-third player in the world, Mama Jarv, 
uh, the guy who won candidates last year, uh, Rajabov, and a couple of great games uh, by even uh, by my student, he's an IM nowadays, and one more game uh, played by Mateusz Bartel, who usually uh, plays the Dutch with the black pieces, so he certainly knows what the real problem of this variation is. Hope that you enjoyed in this presentation. Uh, Noel, thank you so much uh, once again for uh, requesting these videos and paying for them. And uh, guys, hopefully you're going to have uh, such a big number of nice wins just like these top world GMs. Thank you and thank you all once again for your donations for my birthday. Bye-bye, guys. See you soon.